thank you. I want to thank the uh, Philadelphia Bar Association, the uh, Pennsylvanians for Modern Court for uh, sponsoring this event, uh, and also Attorney Duffy for being the moderator. Um, as many of you know, of course, this year in Pennsylvania, we're going to elect seven statewide appellate judges. Uh, with only 31 elected statewide appellate positions, we're going to be electing almost a quarter of the Pennsylvania judiciary. judiciary. Uh, this is going to have an impact on our courts for generations to come. Uh, I'm running because I believe that we need individuals who can address the complex uh, and difficult legal issues facing our Commonwealth. Um, we, um, I believe that we need people who have well-rounded judicial and legal backgrounds. I'm a judge of the Court of Common Pleas of Blair County where I handle a little bit of everything. I also have a private practice background as well and have been a former prosec prosecutor. So for me also it's about public service. Uh, and I have served uh, in many capacities in public service in my career, and I'm looking forward to uh, hopefully having the vote of the people in the Commonwealth. Thank you. Uh, it's a good question. I think that uh, it really comes down to hard work and teamwork. Okay, you, you sit with the other judges on your panel, and you have to work hard. Um, I have a strong work ethic. All the lawyers that would practice before me would tell you that. Um, I get my decisions out now in a timely fashion, uh, even though they're well-reasoned decisions, and I think that's really the key. Um, prior to being in a court of common pleas right now, I do a little bit of everything, so I write decisions on all different areas of the law. Uh, prior to being a judge, I was a prosecutor for 15 years. Uh, I served half of that career as a, the equivalent of first assistant, so I helped uh, manage the office, run the office, supervise other lawyers, um, try major cases, but I was also permitted to have my own practice, uh, which I operated on a regular basis, uh, doing litigation, family, civil, labor law litigation, um, and I also was also a professor at the same time. Um, so I have a strong work ethic, and I think that's necessary to uh, the Superior Court to have people who work hard, have well-rounded experience, uh, and are team players. Um, I believe in working as part of a team. I think that's important. I probably learned that being an infantryman in the United States Army Reserves and over the course of my career in, in uh, public service. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> well, look, I mean, it's been mentioned here earlier, uh, every decision is important to the people that come before the court. Um, I, we've been asked, I think all of us will agree that a lot of the organizations have asked, what is the, some of the most important decisions that you render? Um, well, they're all important. Um, so I think that every case deserves uh, its level of importance because of the litigants. Um, from a legal standpoint, um, as a judge who handles a little bit of everything in the Court of Common Pleas, um, I can think of uh, decisions from the Superior Court and Supreme Court on criminal law with mandatory minimum sentences. Um, uh, I know just last year the Supreme Court uh, issued a decision on the standing of grandparents. Uh, which has affected uh, my docket uh, in custody cases. Um, I know the Supreme Court just not that long ago made a decision on, a, uh, on the question of uh, arbitration clauses as they apply to uh, wrongful, discharge, or wrongful uh, uh, death and survival actions. Um, these decisions all had impact in their particular areas of the law and affect uh, the court's docket and work on a, on a daily basis. Um, but. Uh, I think that every case, even the custody case, for example, is uh, might be a routine case that we, the Superior Court hears, but uh, that custody case is real important to the litigants before it, so every case has its level of importance. Thank you. Well, that's a big question for 90 seconds, so here's my answer. Uh, Everybody's got the same answer. <laughs> uh, I was a, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I was a prosecutor for 15 and a half years, um, and uh, the, the second half of, of that was the equivalent of the first assistant. So I practiced regularly before the Superior Court. Uh, um, uh, you know, all, just about every major criminal case you do, uh, if there's a conviction, winds up uh, in the Superior Court. So I had a lot of practice before the Superior Court. I was also a, uh, had my own law office where I did litigation. So that caused me to um, uh, practice before the Superior Court uh, on occasion as well in family law cases. Uh, and to a lesser degree, of course, civil cases. So um, I think that that uh, experience uh, obviously is a benefit uh, to being a Superior Court judge. Under having that appellate experience as a lawyer um, is a benefit to seeing 
uh, how appeals work and, and how appeals are litigated. Um, and I think that it also, um, uh, as, a, as a lawyer, gives you um, an understanding of the impact of the workload uh, that the Superior Court is doing and the need for judges to be efficient uh, and effective uh, in, in their operations uh, and on the, on the work that they do. So I think it's uh, having that broad-based experience uh, both as a trial a lawyer and an appellate lawyer is a, is a benefit. Thank you. Um, you know, the rules of uh, conduct uh, speak to this issue. You have to weigh the, um, the amount of the contribution with the overall amount spent on the particular campaign. That's obviously going to affect the Court of Common Pleas judges a little bit different than appellate judges, depending on the amount of money that they raised, the amount of money they contribution. There's kind of an implicit in that rule, a, a balancing test there. So I think that that would be my guide, is to follow the rules. But I also think at the end of the day, too, it's about integrity. It's about transparency and disclosure. Um, I think it's important for a judge to disclose when there's any question of impropriety. Uh, I do that on a regular basis as a trial court. Uh, if I might know somebody, if there's a contribution, whatever the reason, I try to disclose. I think that's important to me. My integrity is really important. I tell people that I took I put my hand on the Bible a couple times in my life. Once was to join to become an infantryman, once was to become a prosecutor, and the other was to become a judge. And that oath is more important to me than any, than any support or contribution that I've received uh, in my campaign. Uh, as for whether or not um, there, it would be a, a better process, I do favor the election of judges, um, but I do also understand uh, the, uh, the concerns that are raised, they're legitimate concerns, I think, it's worthy of a public debate about that. Um, I served on a merit selection panel in the Western District in the selection of federal judges as an appointed member, so I understand that process. And I think we just need to take a, a hard look at uh, all the options. And there are also regional elections, other things that have been put out there as compromises as well that I think need to be looked at. everybody then. Um, yeah, I think it's important to uh, engage in hiring decisions and, and be inclusive. Um, I did that as a supervising prosecutor. I do that in my chambers. Um, I also think it's a, uh, important for the court as a whole to have uh, outreach um, on issues of diversity and um, um, inclusion in members of the community. Our court in Blair County does a good job of that. We have good working relationships with the Blair, Blair County NAACP and other uh, groups that would promote diversity and inclusion. Um, I've also, for about eight years, been a uh, adjunct professor at a local community college, and I teach in the criminal justice and sociology department. Um, there's students in there, obviously, that want to go into the criminal justice field. Um, it's a regular part of the classes that I teach on criminal law and uh, the court system about diversity issues and law enforcement and the criminal justice system. So those are all ways to uh, promote diversity and. Uh, uh, work towards inclusion. I think it, uh, a number of reasons, but the breadth of experience is important. Um, as a litigator, I believe that I uh, probably did handle cases with just about every area of the, of the Superior Court, maybe 90 to 95 percent of those, and being a judge that handles a wide variety of cases on a daily basis um, is also a, a benefit. Um, I also agree with what uh, Craig Stedman said. I believe that there's, we have a lot of fine judges on our Superior Court, but there isn't a lot of um, prosecution experience, people who have lengthy careers and time as a prosecutor, which I have. I don't think there's any veterans uh, on the Superior Court. So I think that those are just uh, some of the reasons that uh, my candidacy would be different than, uh, than the other candidates and, and of value to the people of Pennsylvania.